a golden dome? What's up with that? You might have heard about the plans to build a golden dome over the United States to protect us from incoming missiles, from adversaries and enemies. It's inspired by what's known as the Iron Dome over Israel, where there's a missile defense system where if it detects and tracks an incoming missile, it then sends counter missiles to destroy it in midair. So named because iron is a strong metal. We use iron to make steel and make skyscrapers out of that substance. We don't make skyscrapers out of gold. First, it's valued in other ways, but gold is one of the softest metals on the periodic table. Uh, do you remember old cartoons and some old Westerns? Someone would pay for a drink or a whiskey with a gold coin and the person who receives it bites it. That's because the simple pressure from your teeth and your jaw would indent the gold, verifying that it was the soft metal we call gold. So it's a little odd that we would call a defense system gold. It's more evidence that the president likes shiny objects than understands elements on the periodic table. But it's the idea that counts here. Is this something we can or should do? So let's reflect on what this would mean. You might not have known that we already have a missile defense system in place in Greenland and on the West Coast that protects us against the launch of intercontinental ballistic missiles detected by satellite. And once it's seen coming over the horizon, we have means of destroying them in mid-flight. Now, let me distinguish the two kinds of weapons. So a ballistic missile gets launched, but with such velocity and at such altitude that it leaves Earth's atmosphere. And most of the distance it traverses is suborbital, which means once it leaves the atmosphere, only gravity commands its trajectory from there onward. And that's the definition of the word ballistic. If something is ballistic, its arc is measured entirely by the force of gravity and by nothing else. What makes ballistic missiles so deadly is that because they're suborbital, you can launch from any place on Earth and hit another target within 45 minutes because a full orbit around Earth low Earth orbit takes 90 minutes. So you're never gonna have to go three quarters of the way around the Earth to strike an enemy. You would just go the other direction. So if you wanna protect against this, you wanna do it while it is in the larger part of its orbital path. Uh, later on, it becomes much, much harder to do so. The most straightforward way of detecting a ballistic missile is on launch, because that's when it has a signature that can be identified by our satellites in orbit. These are reconnaissance security satellites. And once you get that, and once you have its trajectory, you can then instantly calculate what an intercept would be. And provided you have missiles ready to do so, uh, you are protected. So that would be a ballistic missile. Then you have other kinds of missiles, hypersonic missiles and artillery, these kinds of things, where Often you can launch those from mobile platforms. So you don't always track where it might come from. And so a launch might be successful and you'd have to sort of wait until it got high enough above the horizon to detect what it is, where it's coming from, and possibly do something about it. So it's two sort of categories of missile attacks. The second category, your enemy has to be much closer to you to make that work because it's not going suborbital to cover the intercontinental distances that ballistic missiles are known to do. You might ask, is it even possible to completely protect a country the size of the United States? Throw in Alaska as well, Hawaii and other places remote from the lower 48. Uh, I don't know. I know it's possible to protect us from certain compass directions from the United States where we know we have sworn enemies. But to think we'd be able to do that in every possible direction, from every possible place on Earth, it comes with a built-in assumption that we would ultimately make enemies of the entire world. I, I don't know what 
our conduct will be in the future that could possibly trigger that. I do know that right now, where we have known sworn enemies of the United States, we have missile defenses looking in their directions. And the cost of this, a minimum several hundred billion dollars. Is that what we're spending all this money on that's being saved? By the way, the entire Apollo program from start to finish was about a hundred billion dollars. Ultimately, how effective is a Golden Dome anyway? A Golden Dome presumes that the method of attack will be from the sky, be it high in the sky or from space itself. And it's not imagining that there could be an attack from within. In fact, in 1946, J. Robert Oppenheimer testifying in front of a closed door session of the Senate on how safe we might be now that the world has entered the realm of atomic weapons. If people brought an atomic bomb into New York City, would we have a way of detecting that? They said, what possible technology would enable this? Because they're ready to pay for that. We want to protect our borders. What advanced technology will allow us to detect an atom bomb brought in by truck into a major metropolitan area? And he said, a screwdriver to open every single crate that entered a city. That's the high technology you would need if people decided to bring their weapons in by truck. That's the interesting thing about very visible defense systems. Once it's in place, then a whole category of warfare becomes obsolete, opening up other categories of warfare, like delivering weapons by truck into major metropolitan areas. Perfect thing a terrorist might consider doing. Poisoning a water supply, releasing pathogens. Maybe the real solution here was what occurred to Abraham Lincoln when he said, do we not conquer our enemies when we make them our friends? Is that just me? I, I don't know. But that's the world I want to live in. So this has been another installment of What's Up With That. Until next time, keep looking up. If you love a good mystery, and who doesn't, check out the new season of The Secret of Skinwalker Ranch only on the History Channel. It's America's most mysterious location known for strange lights, radiation spikes, tech malfunctions, and even UAP sightings. The team's investigation has led them to uncover real physical evidence of something unnatural buried inside the Mesa. Can they uncover the truth once and for all? Don't miss the season premiere of The Secret of Skinwalker Ranch, Tuesday, June 3rd, with new episodes Tuesdays at 8, 7 central only on the History Channel.